let's say that we have three teddy bears and we are going to arrange them into three chairs. So I have three potential bears that I could put into that first chair. Let's say that I happen to put this bear there. So now I have two potential bears that could go into this chair. So let's say I happen to put this bear there and then the last bear is gonna go into the last chair. This is one arrangement that we could have. Now let's say that this bear wants to sit beside this bear. So we can move these two bears around. So I'm gonna put him there and I'm gonna put him there. It doesn't look any different because these two bears happen to be identical. I do have three objects, three bears, that I am arranging into three different positions. So I have three possibilities for which bear can go into that first chair, and then two, and then one. So we have six arrangements that can occur. However, if I flip these two bears around, so this bear goes here and this bear goes here, my arrangement doesn't look any different. This looks like one arrangement. This looks like another one. Even though I took this first bear and switched him around with this bear, you can't tell by looking at the arrangement. And the same thing here. These two bears switched positions here and here, but you can't tell. So I have six arrangements, but this one looks the same, this one looks the same, and this one looks the same. So we actually end up with only three different arrangements. There are three letters in the word C. How many ways can we arrange them? We can put the S into the first position, or we can put the S into the second position, or we can put the S into the third position. There are three different ways that we can arrange those three letters. Now, this is different than what we did previously where we had three distinct objects. So let's just say for a minute that these two E's are different. So I'm just gonna call these E1 and E2. So if I start the same way, so I put the S in the first position, S in the second, position s in the third position if I now take this e and move it to the last position take the e that was in the last position and move it to the middle position I now have two different arrangements same thing here if I switch the position of those e's around I have two different arrangements and the same thing happens in this case so if the objects are in fact different then what we're doing is we're taking that three factorial three possibilities for the first position two possibilities for the second position and then that last letter goes into the last position, we can see that there are six ways of arranging those three letters. However, those two E's are not different. So there are only three different ways that we can arrange those three letters. We know that N factorial is going to arrange all objects. So in this second example here, I have three objects. Three factorial arranges all of them. So if these three letters happen to be different, I would get six different arrangements. But those two E's are not different. So if we have identical objects, what we're going to do is divide out any objects that are identical. So in this first example up here, we can see that we are arranging three objects, but because two of them happen to be identical, we're going to divide out those two E's that are the same, and then in your calculator, if you go three factorial divided by two factorial, that will give us three different arrangements that we can get. Let's take a look at some examples here. So in our first example, we are asked how many different arrangements we can make using all the letters in the word parallelogram. So we're gonna count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. So we have 13 letters and we can see that we have several letters that are identical. So we're going to begin by arranging all 13 letters. So any of those letters can go in any position, but then we need to divide out the duplicates. And you're going to have to be really careful because the question is never going to say, anything that's going to alert you to the fact that we're dividing them out. If it's a permutation, you need to take a look and say, are any of these objects identical? If so, you know you need to divide them out in order to get the number of different arrangements. All right, the other thing you have to watch is your calculator is not great with fractions. So when you enter this into your calculator, you have to remember to bracket the denominator, and you can even try this out. If you do not bracket the denominator, you will get a different answer, and your answer is going to be incorrect. So try this, get your calculator out, and you're gonna type in 13 factorial divided by, and then it's really helpful if you can indicate what you're dividing out. So these are my three A's that are identical. We then have three L's that are identical, and we also have two R's that are identical. So you can see we have a lot of objects that are identical. And then once we take those out, we're going to have 86,486,400 different arrangements. In our next example, we're looking for how many different arrangements are there for the six letters in the word Canada. 
Now, the first one says there are no conditions. Now, no conditions does not mean ignore the duplicates or ignore the identical letters. A condition is something like what we have here where it says the first letter has to be this or certain things have to go in certain spots. No conditions, you still need to pay attention to those duplicates in order to get the number of different arrangements. So again, we're going to start with arranging all of the letters. Any letter can go in any position. Then we're going to divide out those three A's that are identical. That's going to give us the number of different arrangements that we can get when we arrange the letters in the word Canada. Now if we have a condition we can begin by actually drawing out our spaces so there's six different letters. The first letter has to be a C so if I'm going to put the one C into that first position there's only one potential letter that can go there. Once I put that C there I now have five different letters that can go into my next position and then four, three, two, and one. Now we're going to arrange the remaining five letters but three of them are going to be A's. So we're going to divide out those three duplicates that's going to give us the number of different arrangements which is going to be 20. And our final example is going to be a pathways question, which is something that tends to come up quite frequently. So we're going to determine the number of different possible routes that we can walk if we're going from one point to another without backtracking. If we were to start here and then go here and then backtrack, we're going to have an impossible amount to count. It's just not possible to figure it out. So we're going to have all blocks going in the same direction. We can only walk them in one order. So we can either start here and work our way down to this corner, or we can start here and work our way up to this corner. So either way you'll get the same number of arrangements. We just need a starting point. All right, most people find it easier to work to the right and down. So let's say we start here at point A and we're looking to get down here to point B. So I'm going to begin here and I'm going to walk to my next block. So there is one way that I can go from here to here or I could go from this block down here and there is only one way that we can get to this block. So now if I'm going to get to this block here you can see that I have two ways of getting here. I can either go this way or I can go this way. So there are two ways that we can get to that block there. If I go back to my starting point there is only one way that I can get to this block there. So I'm going to put a little one here. But if I were to get to this block, you can see that we're coming from either here or here. There's one way to get to that block. There are two ways to get to that block. Or in math means at. One plus two means that I have three ways that I can get to this block here. So you're always looking at where are we coming from. Here where there's one way or here where there's two ways. There's three ways to get to that point. I'm either going to go one, two, or three. So I have three ways of getting to that block. So now continuing over, so if I go from here to this block, there's only one way that I can get to that block. But when I get to this block, I'm coming from either here or here. If there is one way to get to that block plus three ways to get to that block, that means there are four different ways I can get to that block. If I'm going to this block, I'm only coming from this direction. So there's one way to get there, which means I have only one way I can get to that block. If I'm going to this block, I'm coming from here or here. So one plus four means there are five ways of getting to that block. If I'm going to this block, I'm coming from here. So there is only one way that I can get to that block. But if I'm at this block, I'm coming from either here or here. One plus five, there are six different ways that we can get to that block there. Now, if I'm going to get to this block, I'm coming only from this direction. So there's one way to get there, which means I have only one way of getting to this block. Now this block, I'm coming from here or here. Two plus one means I have three ways of getting to that block. If I'm on this block, I'm coming from here or here. So three ways plus three ways. There are six different ways that I can get to this block here. This block, I'm coming from here where there's four ways or here where there's six ways. Four plus six means there's ten ways to get to that block. This one here, there are five or ten, so I have fifteen different ways that I can get to this block. And when we get to the final destination, we're coming from either here, where there are six ways of getting there, or here, where there are fifteen ways of getting there. There are twenty-one different ways that we can get to that last position. 
Now, you'll, you're going to notice that we are either walking east or we are walking south. In total, we have to walk seven blocks. So five east, two south. I can go three east, one south, two east, one south. It's still gonna be in total five east and it's still gonna be two south. I can go two south, five east, but again, I'm walking seven blocks in total. So if the blocks happen to be duplicates, then what we can do is say, okay, there's seven blocks that we have to walk in total. The blocks going east all look the same. The blocks going south all look the same. And again, when you put this in your calculator, Calculator, you have to remember to bracket the denominator and this is going to give you the total number of different possible routes that we could have walked to get from point A down here to point B. Now in the second example we can see that these blocks are not identical so again we're going to pick a starting place so let's say we start here and then it's the same concept we're going to say to get from here to here there is only one possible way that we can walk and then if I'm going to get to this point again I'm only coming from here so there is only one possible way that we can get there and then if I take this corner here I'm coming from this direction so there is only one way that we're going to get there if I get to this point, you kind of have to go in order here. So I'm coming from here only. So if there's one way to get here, I have only one way I can get to this point here. And so from our starting point, there's only one way that we're gonna get there because remember, we're not backtracking. So now if I keep going over, let's take this point, I'm coming only from this direction. So again, there's gonna be one way that I can get here. And then when I get to this corner, I'm coming from here or here. So one plus one, there are two ways that I can get to that. That corner there and then we're going to go down kind of to the next row so if I'm on this corner I'm coming from here or here so one plus one there's two ways that I'm going to get to that corner there this corner here I'm coming from here or here so if there's one way to get there plus two ways to get there I have three different ways that I can get to that corner this corner here I'm coming from here or here two plus three, there are five different ways that I can get to this corner. Now when I get to this corner, I'm only coming from this one direction. So if there's five ways to get here, I'm going to continue on five plus zero, there's five ways to get to that corner. And likewise here, I'm coming only from that corner. So five plus zero again, there's gonna be five ways that I can get down here. Now carrying on with the next row, so I'm only coming from this direction where there are two ways. So there are two ways that we can get here. Now when we get to this corner, I have three or two. So three plus two, there are five ways to get to this corner. When I get here, I'm coming from here or here. Five plus five, 10 ways to get to that point. When I get here, I'm coming from here or here. So five plus 10, there are 15 ways to get to that point. And then my last corner on that row, five plus 15, there are 20 different ways I can walk to get to that corner. In our last row, so this corner here, I'm coming only from there. So there are two ways to get there. And then if we scoot over here, so this is my next corner, I'm coming from here or here. So 10 plus two, there are 12 ways that we can get to that block. My next block here, I'm coming from here where there are 15 ways of getting there, or here where there are 12 ways of getting there. 15 plus 12, 27. And then my last corner, my final destination, I have 20 ways to get here, or 27 ways to get here. That means when I add them together, there are 47 different ways that we can get to that last destination from our starting point.